Well, good evening. Welcome, everyone, to this, our, the 12th Sunday of after Pentecost. Welcome to the Lord's house. How's everybody doing this evening? Uh, just a few announcements. First of all, Dick, do you have anything at all? Yeah. Yes, I would like to announce you get. If you have any extra money, the box is back there. This will be the last week that we have it all. Please so come in if you get a chance. Thank you. All right. Now, some of you may or may not know, so now everybody will know, if, if in case you didn't, Beverly Krause passed away Wednesday, August 16th. Her funeral will be held here at St. Mark's on Monday at 11, the visitation, of course, one hour before 10. After the funeral, there will be a lunch, and then following the lunch, you'll be out to, uh, I believe it's Evergreen Cemetery in Fort Atkinson for the committal. As far as other announcements, everybody knows, of course, uh, what's in the bulletin, so I'm going to be out of it will just it reinforce the highlights, if you will. Don't forget about the beat, the beat the Kite service. That, that'll be the, the royalty couples for many years past. We'll be attending our 9 a.m. service on Sunday, September 10th as a group. Our own St. Mark's members, Glenn Fleming and his wife Amber, are the current king and queen of the German celebration this year. Let's welcome all of them to our service on Sunday the 10th. Now, as far as small world goes, as you know, we're going to have that floating parade. Dick, every day it's, it's like the tower, you know, or the Sistine Chapel, whatever. Every time I see that trailer, it's got new parts and new things are on it. So it's coming along just fine. So don't forget that on the 17th, when we have that parade, our children from the small world, the uh, Montessori school, will be sitting on the on the uh, trailer, and of course, we'll be handing out pumpkins. So uh, I believe. They still could use some labor, maybe some grunt work for the decorations, right? Yeah, so if, if you just want to hand tissue out or you want to give a hand in any way, the hard stuff has already been done, right guys? So now you just need help putting it all together. Uh, see one of the members of the committee, Janet Dick or, or Bobby. As far as that, ready kids for school. It would, if you'd like to support the school supply program for Jefferson County kids in need, School item, uh, schools get items for classrooms too. A uh, tax deductible check may be sent to Ready Kids for School, and the information that, uh, where you can send that is on the back of your bulletin as well or in the announcement section. If you have any questions, please contact Katie Shiskowski. Is that right? Polish, right? I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, as far as all that, you all know about the stairs that were repaired. Please take a look at those if you haven't already. And don't forget, at the July Council meeting, it was decided to replace the bubblers with water dispensers. If you gave a gift for the expense and do not want it used for the rental fee each month, please contact me. That takes care of all the announcements that I have, with the exception of Bible study. Don't forget Tuesday morning a.m. Where, uh, Dale, where are we meeting this week? Okay, so we'll be at Four Sisters Restaurant this week, 8 a.m. on Tuesday. Thursday, as always, don't need to worry about where we are. Although, you know, the Thursday group, we may want to think about going somewhere for lunch and have a Bible study. How would that work out? I mean, I get breakfast, I might as well get lunch, too. But uh, that's 9 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall, and we're studying the book of Galatians. And, of course, Sunday, right after worship, we're looking at who is Jesus. That takes care of all the announcements that I have. If anybody else has anything, of course, we Yes, here we go. Yes. Uh, as the captain of the Darkball team, we're here to see the house, and we're looking for men, women, anybody that wants to play to play on Tuesday nights. Playing what? Dark ball. Dark ball? Dark ball. It's like playing baseball. It's a fourth and fourth one, it's a fourth, second, third. It's like one of you starts instead of the ball. Oh, it's like it, we used to play beanbag baseball, same principle. All right. Okay, where is that done at now? Right, right here? Well, you go around the different churches, but it was, we're just looking at it now. It's <laughs> is there a time or a meeting or a day? At 7 o'clock we started playing. Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. Here? Well, not every week. Not every week. But we travel with different churches in the area. Okay. That's all that's fun. Yeah. All right, thank you. You're welcome to join. Oh, yeah. That sounds like that was something to look for. Hey, Tuesday, is it all right? Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else have an announcement at all? If not, please rise. We follow our order of service as printed in our service folder, and we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and has given His one and only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be
that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she said. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Leave the place that he lived. 
Go off into a country that you've never seen before. Go to where I'm leading you. Didn't give him a single direction. Didn't give him a map. Just said, go to where I tell you. And Abraham trusted God. Abraham trusted his direction even when it didn't seem like he was going anywhere that he knew. And especially when God told him to do things or to wait for things that seemingly seemed impossible. Not knowing where he would end up, trusting only in God's direction, Abraham left his home in Mesopotamia and went off, not knowing quite what was going to happen. Faith will do that. Faith will do that. That's what faith is. It's content to go forward blindfolded if necessary, not knowing anything and only trusting in God's direction. That's what faith's all about. That's what Jesus is telling us this morning, or this evening in our gospel lesson. Jesus actually shows us another person who could be standing right in the midst of all the people I mentioned just a few moments ago. Standing right there among the members of the Hall of Faith. She's one of those people that God said in the Old Testament lesson that he would bring to his holy mountain, to his house of prayer. And she is a Gentile woman. When speaking about this Gentile woman, Jesus said, Woman, you have great faith. Woman, you have great faith. Our Savior praises this foreigner for her great faith. So the question I need to answer this evening is exactly, look on your screen. There's the question we all need to answer. What is great faith? Now last Sunday... We talked about that a little bit. We talked about Peter, how he went walking on the water, showing us his trusting faith in Jesus. And so as we continue after that through the book of Matthew, Jesus shows us another person, a woman who had great faith. But not just any woman. A woman who was a Gentile. In other words, a non-Jew. Jesus only commends two people you can read the New Testament from back to front. You can start with Matthew and finish with Revelation. And Jesus only commends two people in the entire New Testament about their faith. And they are both Gentiles. In Matthew chapter 8, Jesus tells us about the Roman centurion who came to him. And after dealing with him, Jesus said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith in all of Israel. So the other question I started batting around in my head is, what do these two Gentiles have in common? I mean, besides the obvious, you know, the fact that they're both not Jewish. Well, the main thing that sticks out is they both came to Jesus for help. That Gentile woman, that Canaanite woman in our gospel lesson for today came to Jesus crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Now, we're not giving too many details about the daughter. All we know is that she's suffered from demon possession. And we really get less information about the mother. Only for the fact that she was a Canaanite woman who lived in the region of Tyre and Sidon. And that doesn't say very much, unless you're the people that Matthew was writing the gospel to. Don't forget that Matthew was writing to Jews. And so they would all know what that meant. As soon as he said, a Canaanite woman, a woman who lived in the region of Tyre and Sidon, they would have known right away, she's an idol worshiper. She's an enemy of Israel. She belongs to the people that Joshua and all the Israelites were supposed to wipe out when they took over the Holy Land. However, what Matthew tells us this evening, he tells us that this Canaanite woman was not like the enemies of Israel. She came to Jesus. She cried out to him and called him Lord, son of David. And she asked him for help. So by her own words, we can see that she believed Jesus was the promised Messiah, sent by God. She believed that Jesus had the power to help. And there's only one place where that could have come from. God tells us in St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians that no one can call him or no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So somehow, somewhere in that woman's life, she had heard the gospel message of Christ and the Holy Spirit created faith in her heart. A great faith that believed she could find help for her daughter from the Son of God. Now, perhaps as Jesus 
Gentile woman, again, maybe she was more living amongst the Jews or had Jewish friends or relatives or whatever the case might be. Maybe, maybe, just maybe she was a student of the Old Testament Scriptures. Maybe she was reading the Psalms, where in Psalm 121 we're told, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord or the sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. And so what was true for the Canaanite woman is also true for us. As I've been preaching for the last couple of weeks, I've got a continuing theme running. If you haven't picked up on it, you haven't been paying attention. We can always go to Jesus for help. He's always more than willing to do so. I mean, after all, when you think about it, he's already giving us and given us the most help we could ever possibly need by dying on the cross for us. You know, when you think about it, when you compare that demon-possessed little girl, it's no different than the world. The entire world was possessed by a demon. At one time, the entire world was in the hands of Satan, was in the hands of sin, slaves to death. But God in His mercy sent His one and only Son to this world to save it, to bring salvation to all who have faith in Jesus. And so what is great faith? Great faith is nothing more than coming to Jesus for help. And it's persistent when it does so. We have the perfect example of that, of that, the gospel lesson for today. Great faith is persistent in seeking Jesus' blessing. You know, the scriptures tell us in numerous places that when people came to Jesus, when they needed help, he was more than happy, more than willing to do so. But it seemed strange. Did you notice in the gospel for today? Didn't it seem just a little strange to you that when this woman came to Jesus crying out for help, Jesus did not answer? word. Did you wonder why Jesus is treating this woman this way? Didn't Jesus say, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Drive away. Didn't he teach us that everyone's to come to him? He wants everyone to come when he said, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus didn't say yes like we would expect. But he didn't say no either, did he? He just remained silent. But his silence didn't discourage the woman. She was very persistent. She kept coming to him, seeking his blessing. And St. Matthew tells us that because of that persistence, she got on the apostles' nerves. She was really irritating them. They went to Jesus and were told that he, the apostles tell Jesus, Lord, will you send her away? She keeps crying out after her catch that? She keeps crying out after us. Keeps. She didn't stop. She didn't accept Jesus' silence. Even after Jesus said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, that Canaanite woman kept up with her crying out for his help. She kept coming to him and asking and pleading with him. It was her persistent pleas to heal her daughter <coughs> from demon possession. That's all she cared about. So she came and she knelt before Jesus. And with all humility, she simply cried out, Lord, help me. Like Peter last week, right? You remember Peter as he's walking on the water, saw the wind and the waves, began to sink. He didn't try to get back to the boat. He wasn't trying to tread water or splash around. He looked at Jesus and he said, Lord, save me. The Canaanite woman did the same thing. She recognized Jesus as her Lord and the only source of help for her daughter. She wasn't going to quit. Can you think of anybody, do you know anybody who's a quitter? Nobody knows a quitter? Come on. You did a lot of quitters, yeah. But you don't know about them because what do they do? They quit. They don't do anything. I quit. I give up. You ever said that yourself? We often do that, very only because of our sinful nature. 
Especially when we're praying for something. We're asking God for something. And it seems like it's not happening. It seems like he's not listening. It seems like maybe the answer is no. He's not giving me what I'm asking for. And so sometimes we give up. We think God is either too busy or he's simply not listening. But Jesus says that's not to be our response when our cries seem to go unanswered. Because Jesus had a specific purpose in mind when he didn't answer the Canaanites' plea. At least right away. And that's, you know, remember telling your kids this? That was to teach them patience. Patience. Time was not exactly right for him to cure the daughter. Wasn't there yet. He heard it. He was going to answer it. But he would do it in the time that he knew was best. And it just wasn't right then. And that same lesson also goes for us. We often question, does Jesus answer our cries for help? And that's a question many Christians face. I mean, I know of elderly people who I've visited. They're suffering. They're having the pains of old age and they long to die. And they cry out to God to take them home. And yet, it seems God remains silent. I know of Christians who are dealing with sickness and disease. And they cry out for healing and restoration. But it seems like God's not hearing them. Instead, the disease gets worse or maybe their illness lingers for a long period of time. I know of people who cry out to God because their children no longer go to church. They fall away. And to them, it seems like those cries go unanswered. And so we wonder. We might even question. Is Jesus even hearing? Our cries for help. And the answer is yes. We know God hears us. He tells us in His Word, Call upon me on the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you will honor me. And so it's with great faith we can call on Jesus. We can be confident that He will do whatever we ask Him to do. Again, what we see here is another miracle. All he does is say, your request is granted, and the daughter was healed from that very hour. He has the power to help. He only says that we need the patience to wait for the answer. He gives us his promises. He promises never to leave us nor forsake us. He promises to make everything work out for our good. And most of all, we know the love that Jesus has for each of us. A love that was willing to come to earth, suffer, and die for us. A love that was willing to take our place under God's wrath over sin. So we can have eternal life. So now another question. Do you belong in the hall of faith? Would you be able to stand beside Abraham and compare your faith life to his? I'm going to answer for you. I'm going to say yes. I can say that because I know the Holy Spirit created faith in you as well. From the moment of your baptism, from the moment you heard the gospel for the very first time, the Holy Spirit has created in your heart a faith that can move mountains. A faith that recognizes sin for what it is. A cancer. That eats away at our relationship with God. You have a faith that reminds you each and every day of everything that God has done for you. The cross of Christ. And how Jesus took all your sins there and left them there, paid in full. Paid with his precious blood. You have a faith, a great faith, which God has given you that comes to the Lord's table to receive the very body and blood of our Savior for God's personal assurance that your sins are forgiven. It's a faith that echoes the hymn writer, which I really thought you were going to choose this one. In the one verse, what's this hymn? Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the, thy cross I claim. What hymn? Come on. Oh, come on. It's in there, but I can't find it. Should I take that the maestro here? She'll tell me. No, I wasn't thinking of that one. Just as good. I was thinking Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages cleft for me. Now it comes back, right? What is great faith? Great faith is a gift of God. And it lives inside each and every one of you. 
It's always my prayer that may God or that God will grant all of us the ability to grow in this faith. Because he's the one that's given it to us. So that when, when he calls us home to heaven, we can stand there amongst all the faithful in the hall of faith of heaven. Brothers and sisters, this is God's word for you this evening. Please rise. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <coughs> Let us now join together in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, bless this congregation and church. Grant that it may be a house of prayer, and we a people of prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, grant that the church may steadfastly proclaim your irrevocable gifts and calling, that the disobedient may receive mercy and that those who hear would become grafted onto Jesus Christ, the true vine. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, grant that the government and those who protect us might keep justice and do righteousness for your namesake and according to your will. Bless our president, members of Congress, our Supreme Court justices, our state and local officials. Guide and protect all who serve us in our armed forces, law enforcement, and our first responders. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, care for those who cry out to you, whether beset with grief, sorrow, pain, or trouble, especially all who are listed in our prayer list and all whose names we carry in our hearts. Be pleased, for Christ's sake, to answer them according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord God, Lord God, Lord of life and death, we thank you for all the mercies with which you blessed your dear children, Beverly Krauss and Vivian Jones, now fallen asleep. We thank you especially for having brought them to the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would comfort their families and all who mourn them with your precious promise and cheer them with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. Grant that the lifeless bodies rest and at last, together with all of us, a joyful resurrection to life everlasting. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain hearts of wisdom, and finally be saved through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, bless all who are about to receive Christ's body and blood from this altar. Grant that these crumbs from your table may strengthen us in faith and love, united with you and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who also taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, share the Lord's peace.
We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.